Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Addiction Watch Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at my new Rolex Explorer 2 16570 F serial from 2004. Now the Rolex Explorer 2 in my eyes is probably one of the best value Rolex watches you can get for your money, especially the last of the five digit Rolex sports steel models. Now this watch on the secondary market, if you can find a good example, uh, costs roughly around 5000 to 5500 uh, yeah, around there, uh, if you want box and papers, maybe a little more. But it's quite a simple watch. It's definitely a tool watch in my eyes. It's, you know, not as flashy as some of the other uh, sports Rolex watches like the GMT Master 2 with those highly polished links and the uh, flashy ceramic bezel, I should say. It's definitely a, um, you know, low-key, under-the-radar watch, and it's definitely picking up a lot of hype lately as prices are slowly going up. So, you know, I've been eyeing one of these for quite some time, and I've seen a lot of other people buying them, and I figured, you know what? What the hell? So I picked one of these up uh, about two weeks ago, and I've been enjoying it ever since then. I obviously chose the black dial variant instead of the white dial. I like this version with the black dial and the red GMT hand. It just really does it for me, the black and the red. Anyway, let's start off with some basic stuff about this watch. We are looking at a 40 millimeter diameter, which is pretty typical of Steel Sports Rolex watches. Although this one does wear much smaller than the newer Maxi case or the chunkier lug watches, which uh, my Submariner is. It definitely wears a lot smaller and actually a bit more comfortable in a way. Now in terms of the actual thickness of this timepiece, we are looking at 12.2 millimeters, uh, which is not too bad. It's quite slim actually if you look at that profile. Uh, it's pretty th pretty slim at 12.2. In terms of lug to lug, we are looking at 47 millimeters or wingspan. So we have 47, which is pretty nice for a 40 millimeter case, allowing it to rest just perfectly on my 6.5 inch wrist. Now the great thing about this watch is it's using the 3186 caliber with a blue parachrome hairspring, which is a nice upgrade from the previous version of that movement. It's a GMT movement with a stationary uh, GMT bezel, as you can see here with a nice finishing on it, which differentiates from the actual finishing on the solid 904L steel case and oyster bracelet. Now, also a nice thing is the water resistance. So we get 100 meters of water resistance on the Explorer 2 with a screw down crown and a screw down case back. So you get a GMT watch, you get a date at the three o'clock as well, you get a screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, and you kind of get the whole package. You know, you can go swimming with it, you can keep t two time zones, and you can tell the date. And you know, it's all for under six grand. I mean, it's kind of hard to find that on the Rolex market. This is pretty much the only watch where you can find those functions for that price. Anyway, the dial is fairly simple. I should say you get your typical Mercedes hand, nice long red GMT hand and hour hand. You get a 2.5 Cyclops magnification. Swiss made labeled at the bottom. This is a COSC certified watch. It is labeled Superlab, Superlative Chronometer officially certified or Superlative, Superlative. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, it does say Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date Explorer 2. And all of the markers, of course, are applied. They are uh, surrounded by 18 karat white gold. The hands themselves are made of 18 karat white gold. And the finishing on the watch. So the sides or the flanks of the watch are highly polished, as you can see here. Uh, definitely nice. Also, the sides of the bracelet, completely polished. These are screw in links as well. Now, the tops are obviously brushed, as well as the top of the bracelet. And heading to the crown, we get a nice signed crown with that Rolex uh, logo there. Let me just zoom in. There we go, as you can see, we get the Rolex crown, which is still perfectly intact. This watch is not that old, I mean, it's from 2004. If I can focus here, there we go. Anyway, to actually function the watch, uh, it's fairly simple. Many people get confused by GMT watches, but they're fairly simple to use. So basically, I'm gonna unscrew this crown here. Pops out, nice solid pop out. First position is self-winding, very smooth as any Rolex watch is, they're really buttery smooth. Now the second position, we get a quick hour change here, and that will change the date. So there's no way to actually change the date uh, quick set if you wanted it to. You kind of got to go forwards 
or you can even go backwards, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, that's that. Now if you pull the crown out, you can move the GMT hand with the uh, hour and the uh, minutes hand as well. And you can just set it there to whatever you want, say two. And then you push it back in and you'd want to come out again and you can change your hour there. And it's that simple. And you can keep two, two time zones, one on the actual dial and one used by the GMT hand, which would be two. Uh, 19 over here, and we'd have, what is that, 10, 19 over there. So eight hours plus over here on the GMT. Very simple, very easy to use. The bezel itself is filled in with black, as you can see, and you can tell the difference in the finishing on the bezel from the actual case and bracelet. And that's one of the nice little hints on there that I do like. The bracelet is fairly solid, a uh, little play. This, this is a pre-owned watch. We get our typical clasp here of the older style Rolex clasps. A uh, nice crown here, flip open lock here. And then this pops open. You also do get four micro adjustments, which is pretty uh, useful. And on the inside, your stamped Rolex clasp. Now obviously the newer ones, much better bracelets, much better clasps, but these, you know, they're pretty comfortable. I don't really have a big problem with it. Um, of course, it's always nicer you know, to have the newer Oyster bracelets, but everything's pretty intact on these. If I get you in close here, uh, everything is really in good condition on this model. I, I would almost say this is like a new old stock watch. Now heading to the case back, we also do get solid end links, a screw down case back. Um, pretty, you know, sterile and simple like any other Rolex. The actual sapphire crystal on this model is flat and sits a little above the uh, stationary bezel there and it looks pretty cool you know um definitely different than the modern you know explorer 2. i think it looks very cool there i like that aspect here is a loom shot for all you loom freaks out there the loom is really good on this model um, that's another big advantage of getting one of the newer models over the older tritium models that the ones that say t greater than 25 at six o'clock the loom is a lot better on these models obviously and it still works uh, which is very useful, especially on a GMT watch and especially on a steel sports watch. You want to have good loom. So yeah, it definitely lasts a, lo lasts a long time. It doesn't fade quickly. It's super legible. There's the Explorer 2 on my 6.5 inch wrist. So it's 47 lug to lug, 40 millimeters in diameter. It rides fairly low on the wrist, I must say. And that nice profile just sinks into your wrist. It's uh, quite a nice, comfortable watch on the wrist. I do like it. There's the Oyster bracelet, as you can see. Very nice. Now, from the outside, it looks really nice until you get to that kind of nasty stamped clasp, uh, which, you know, I don't really honestly don't have a huge problem with. Um, I do like this slight glossy black dial, which you get. I do like that. I, I love that red hinted seconds hand. If you can get in really close there, you can see it. There it is. I love that. Anyway, guys, uh, some things I left out. Um, power reserve. This movement actually has a 50 hour power reserve and 31 joules. I believe that's the only information I left out for all you specification maniacs out there. And yeah, uh, furthermore guys, you know, for the money, honestly, this is probably the best bang per buck and value Rolex watch you can buy today. I don't see these prices lasting much longer. I think in a couple of years, people are going to start catching on that this watch is well worth the money and definitely a good bargain. So, you know, if you're in the market for one of these, definitely check it out, wear it, try it on, see if you like it. I thought I would never like something like this, but now I absolutely love it. So, yeah, you know, it's a great looking watch all around. Definitely one that's going to stay in the collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know what you think of the 16570 in the comment section below. Check out WatchAddictChannel.com, at WatchAddictChannel on Instagram, and hope you guys have an awesome day. Take it easy now. Bye.